Yes, Jack. Good evening, brother. Can you hear me well? Or how are you? How are you? you okay, good? I'm doing good. Yeah, how are you? I'm good. I'm great. Alhamdulillah. All right. Um, I just have some like uh questions on some uh Quran verses and how they kind of flow together. If that's okay, okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so we'll just uh, but right before that, oh, yeah. if I can ask you, are you what are you? What is your religion? What do you believe? Um, you know, I I'd say I've been on like this journey for like the past you know, nine, nine to 10 months right now. And like, well, while I've gone through a couple different religions right now, I would just say that I'm, I'm a seeker of, of knowledge and truth. Yeah. And like, I just kind of want to see if I can find what the truth is and wherever it leads me, you know, that's hopefully where I will end up. So. All right, go ahead. What is your questions? Let's see. Okay. So, um, the first question, um, it, it involves a couple, a couple of, different surahs. Do you want me to read the verses to you? That's fine. Um, okay. So um, basically, um, I think I think we we learned from Surah 5.5, five, um, just paraphrasing, but the verse basically says that, like, permissible for you in marriage are chaste believing women, um, as well as chaste believing, or chaste women of the scripture before. I know what right? it says. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. All right. So, so from this, like, we get, like, the modern day ruling that, like, it's okay for Muslim men to marry a believing Christian and Jewish woman, yeah. <clears throat> and then um, in Surah uh, 2, uh, 221, um, that verse talks about how it's impermissible to marry polytheistic women, right, until they believe. And it's like, you know... Um, uh, chapter 2, 221 is what you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And it's like, um, do not marry polytheistic women for a believing slave woman is better than a free polytheist yes. and how they invite you to the hellfire, right? Yes. And then the last verse that like connects these two um, is um, Surah 9 verses 30 to 31, where it says like, you know, the Jews say that Urza is the son of Allah. And how the does Christians that say, oh, oh, I'll get into it in a second. But, um, and then it says the Christians say that the, the Messiah is the son of Allah. And then the next verse says, they've taken their rabbis and monks as well as the Messiah a son of Mary as Lord's besides Allah. So the, the way this, these connect is like, are, if, if Christians are considered polytheists, right, then like, how does that coincide with the verse from 221 where it says, you know, you shouldn't marry the polytheists. But then the verse from like 930, like also kind of backs up the claim that they're, the Christian and Jews right. are polytheists because they take like, their Lord's. Yes, does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, 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 the answer okay. is no, no. But but uh, again, why is the last verse? How does it connect? Oh, so then the the verse from nine thirty to thirty one is like, um, if I, I think that verse kind of also backs up the claim that Christians and Jews are viewed as polytheists. Oh, oh, that's what you mean. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, because yeah. because polytheism right. in Islam is just associating others with Allah, right? I got what you're saying. I got what you're saying. Yeah. I just wanted to understand okay. how does that verse correlate. Yeah, sorry. Right? I don't know if I've, I'm no, no, that's fine. You're, this well, you're but... fine. You're good. You're good. Okay, thank All you. right. So, so the answer to that question is the verse that was revealed about marrying uh, the polytheist, something called an exception to the general rule. And that exception mm -hmm. was made by Allah Azza wa Jal. Chapter 5 of the Quran is one of the last uh, chapters to be revealed as chapter 9 as well as one of the last chapters to be revealed of the Quran. So uh, we believe in uh, abrogation and we also believe in revelation where Allah Azza will give an exception to a general rule that he previously gave. So Allah said yes in chapter 2 uh, of the Quran, generally all polytheists, for both men and women not to engage with them in marriage. But then mm -hmm. Allah made an exception for the Christian and, and Jewish women specifically in chapter 5 of the Quran after. And how do you see that? You see the verse in the Quran. It says, Al yawma, today. Al yawma mm -hmm. lakum. So today has been made permissible for you, which means this shows that it was not permissible before. So that shows clearly that this is something that has is a change of revelation that Allah is giving now. Okay, this was completely impermissible for you. Here is an exception where Allah Azza wa allows you to do. That's it. So kind of similar to like how alcohol was like, you know, yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of in steps, like taken out. And we see that in the Quran too. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's yes. just... So we have, okay. we have in, in, in jurisprudence, we have something called general, and then we have specific. So there are specific things that can be extracted or taken away from a general rule or a principle that Allah Azza wa Jal, Azza wa Jal gives. This is okay. an example of it. And generally, we believe in, abrog in abrogation as well, as I said. Yeah. And um, just going off from there, because um, so like in the future, when I'm like researching this stuff, like how, 
like is there a rule to like tell like if something's been abrogated like is it like you said if it's like today this has been declared well i think that the fasir like... the fasir would mention that which is exeg books of exegesis would mention this idea this is an exception mm -hmm. from the verse that are mentioned mentioned in this x chapter but i think the verse itself is clear on that as i said because the verse itself is, it says today is it been made permissible for you x which shows indicates that this was not permissible before mm. Okay. And where do we see that it's not permissible before? In the other verse, in chapter 2, verse 2. Okay. So I think I don't even need, in that case, I'd say in this specific example, but in other example, yeah, you will read the uh, books of exegesis, books of tafsir, you will ask people of knowledge, and then they will help you. They'll give you the, the uh, how to connect these verses together. Okay. So basically the summary is that, you know, Christians in them, they're still, you know, categorized as polytheists. They are, 100%. But, but yeah, but because of this verse that came later, abridging the general law against it that's why it's permissible today yeah the this verse is an exception it's not okay. like it's completely it's now that uh for example you're allowed to marry other polities no so you're not allowed to marry a polities like is a hindu for example or yeah the only exception allah gives in this verse today is have been made permissible for you jewish jewish and christian women that are chaste uh pure and and they believe in the scripture these have been made permissible for you with these two conditions so that's an exception to the general rule of marrying a polytheist. Okay, I think that makes sense. I think, yeah, thank you for that. No, that's um, okay. Can I ask another one if that's okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so this one um, is just about like, um, kind of like pre predestination in Islam, yeah? Because I know uh, one of the five, or it's six pillars of Iman mm -hmm. is like uh, takdir, right? It's like uh, belief in the yeah, predetermination yeah. of things and like, you kind of also hear that in like you know Allah guides who he, whom He wills, right? So it's kind of like everything has been decided by Him in some sense. But then I don't agree like, with that terminology, oh, but I get what you're saying. Yes. Like, okay, I was just wondering if you could like, verify that stance. Then, if like, because I was yeah. wondering, like, as we as people, do we have agency, or is it like everything is kind of done by the will of Allah? You know, it's all written in the tablet. Everything that don't say things are done by Allah. See, Allah knows mm -hmm. things. And Allah have written things, Allah created us, and, and everything operates under Allah's will. And under Allah's will is to allow you to choose in this life mm -hmm. uh, that which deals with, with, with your salvation. So the choices that you make is to do with your salvation. And so there are choices that we make based on the, that. Allah doesn't force anything on us. He doesn't do it on our behalf. That's why I disagreed with that kind of terminology. We choose to do them. And based on that, we're accountable for them. But the four stages of Qadr is what I mentioned to you. Knowledge, writing, well, and creation. These are the stages of Qadr. Okay. Wait, so I guess what what's the... Um, I'm a bit confused on what like predetermination means then. Because like... Um, it depends on what you mean by predetermination. It's not something that is... Uh, okay. Like, like yeah. I guess in the sense that like... Um, is is well, it right I, to I, say that... I, mm. I, I explained to you the meaning of predetermination means the four stages. That's if this is if you use that terminology, anyways, this terminology is that in that way is not used in the Quran or Hadith, anyways. That's a, that's a, a foreign terminology, more of a philosophical terminology. Terminology in Quran and Hadith is the four things that I told you. Things that are known, everything Allah knows everything, of course. God knows everything mm -hmm. by definition. These things which are known are written in something called the preserved tablet. Everything that will happen from the beginning of time till the end of it. And mm -hmm. Allah created us. And everything operates under God's will because God is all powerful. Nothing can operate in his kingdom without his will. That's it. Mm -hmm. And he wills, he a part of his will is he said to us, he's given us a choice in this life to choose that which, which deals with our salvation. We can do certain things. If we do good, we'll be rewarded. If we do bad, we'll be, we'll be punished. And that is our choice to make. And mm -hmm. Allah doesn't force anything on us. So basically when you hear like people say like Allah guides whom he wills, it's just... It's he guides whom he wills in the sense that he allows us to make our own choices in, in yeah. striving for this. Yeah, this and allows allows guidance for us and and uh, perhaps puts things in our way in our path that, that we can see the truth and then we can choose either to to follow it or not. These these specific things, yes. Hmm, but it's not like he dictated like you will do this tomorrow and and this will be this and this. Well, and this. If, just... if if Allah said you will become uh, meaning he forces you to become or do specific things, this life would be pointless. Mm -hmm. Meaning like, <laughs> how can it be a test when you don't have a choice in what you're going to do? Yeah. And why? how would Allah command you do good, avoid evil? 
uh, don't choose this, choose that. Don't follow the footsteps. If Allah is telling you these things, then he it means that you have a choice to avoid mm -hmm. these specific things. Okay. I think that makes more sense for that too. All right. Um, so I'm good on that one too. Thank you. Okay. okay. And then um, I have uh, one other big one I want to ask if that's okay too. Okay. Go ahead. Um, this one is um, about... Uh, Surah 2, verse 254, okay. um, where it says, like, oh, believers, donate from what we have provided for you uh, before the arrival of a day when there will be no bargaining, friendship, or intercession, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, that one, you kind of get the idea that there's no intercession by anyone else on the day of judgment. It's all in, like, on between you and Allah, right? Um, but then verse, or Surah 20, verse 109 says, mm -hmm. On that day, no intercession will be of any benefit except by those granted permission by the most compassionate, yes. and whose words are agreeable to him. So, so it's it, the same idea. Yeah, it's, same idea as the question mm, of chapter five first, is. Yeah, there's later, a general later. rule, general principle. Where Allah says there's no intercession to do mm. the disbeliever specific. Now, mm. uh, intercession is only happening with with the, with the, uh, three conditions essentially. Or Allah Azza wa Jal is, is pleased with the person who's doing the, the intercession and the person he's he's doing the intercession to and with the permission of Allah. Mm -hmm. These are three things. Uh, if they are valid, then intercession can happen. That is an exception. That's why the verse says except. It says except because, okay, generally there's no intercession except with these three specific conditions that you'll find in the Quran as well. Versus uh, highlighting them and mentioning them, the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal versus highlighting that Allah is pleased with the person doing the intercession, etc. So with these conditions are, uh, being in place, uh, uh, you can do intercession. But generally, no, there is no intercession. And this also, that verse that you're referring to, is also refuting the disbelievers because they believe that they will have intercession with the idols. Mm. Uh, and that's why Allah is telling them, these idols that used to worship or the humans or the people you used to pray to or whatever you used to pray to other than Allah, is not going to benefit you. You cannot, you cannot use them. You cannot use them as an intercession to uh, be saved on the day of judgment. So fear okay. Allah and obey, essentially, is what the verse is saying. Fear that day that will come. Okay, so basically the first one's a general rule to everyone that you won't get any intercession, but then the second one's like, except if like... Um, the three someone... conditions. Allah gives you permission. Mm -hmm. Allah is pleased with the person doing the intercession, and he's pleased with the person that his intercession is done to. Okay, and this like... Like essentially, could that be like anybody on the day of judgment? Like, like not anybody, but like a righteous. Only believers. Yeah, like only a righteous believer. believer yeah, no, only they can believer. like intercess. Yes. Oh wait, so so only a let's say only a righteous believer can like intercede for like another believer. They can't intercede for like. So it's not. It's not even. I wouldn't use the word righteous. Generally, a believer general. is what we're saying. Because Allah's will, uh, who who would accept intercession for or give give permission mm -hmm. to intercede. It's up to Allah Azza wa Jal, it's, it's uh, to his will. If he determines and he allows a person to do a believer only, to do an intercession, and the other person has to also be a believer. It's not like you're going to do an intercession for this believer to enter paradise. It's not going to happen ever, right? So the yeah. other person has to also be a believer because the believers, for example, will be punished for a period of time. Uh, if they do evil and they die upon evil, it's not like you're just going to go to paradise. Like It's just because you're a believer. There's also punishment to purify yeah. you from these sins you didn't repent from and stop. So an intercession could be a family member is doing intercession for his other family members for Allah to take them away from the fire, out of the fire, essentially. Prophet, والسلام, for instance, will do an intercession to take any of the, of the believers uh, of the fire, anyone who believed who had any atom of faith in his heart. There will be an intercession that will be done on the Day of Judgment that Prophet will do, mm -hmm. uh, where, where people will be taken out. There will be other also intercessions that Prophet والسلام, will do. So this is an example of an intercession that Allah would allow that he told us about. But yeah, and also Allah told us about, for example, a person uh, who dies as a martyr, he's, he can do intercession essentially, right? He'll, have okay. to, he'll be able to do intercession for, for some family members. So there are exceptions to that rule that we're told about. Yeah. Okay, and that's all outlined in, in Quran or Hadith too, yeah? Yes, yes. Okay, exactly. that's good to know too. But um, that made me think of one more thing too, okay. which is just like... <laughs> okay. Sorry, uh, I'm taking too much no, time No, no, too. no, you're good, you're good. Yes. Um, but in terms of like... Um, like uh, I guess, like uh, sins and and good deeds and all of that. Um, like I guess we know that like Allah is like the most forgiving, the most merciful, and all of that, right? Um, and I think there's a verse too that talks about how like 
for every good deed you do, he he like multiplies it by a lot, right? He tries like he doesn't want you to go to punishment. Like he tries to do his best to like okay. all of that, right? Um, I wouldn't so, I wouldn't use that terminology, but yeah. It's not it's not God tries to do his best. It's more of well, a human kind of yeah. I understand what you're saying. I'm just like saying I wouldn't use that terminology, but yes, I understand no, no, what I understand you're trying too, to say. Yeah. Is that God wants uh, because we're very specific about terminology you speak about God. Like if someone speaks about me, I'm usually you know you get offended if someone misrepresents you. The creator yeah. of the universe, like we're very like uh clear about the words that we use about him. But I understand what you're saying. You're saying that Allah his intention is not to punish. Allah says yeah, in the yeah. Quran, Allah yeah. what would Allah do with your punishment? If you mm-hmm. if you believe and you're thankful, what would Allah do with your punishment? Allah is not trying to punish the people essentially. And he's merciful, yes. And he that's why he gives you good rewards. If you do, he increases and multiplies. I understand yeah. what you're saying. Yes. And so from there then, like I feel like at least in the Quran you get like this picture that like that he really is like the most merciful and the most forgiving yeah but then in contrast to like some hadith like maybe i'm interpreting a bit wrong but like there's some things that are like that i think i've heard that it's like anyone who has like like a like alcohol in him will like not taste like these rivers or something right or like um you know it seems it seems more harsh that like Hmm. you know if, if you if you encroach on this territory then you know that's that's kind of it right um so maybe i'm i'm like missing something there or not um like do you know what i mean yeah ju- just because allah is is uh, loving or merciful doesn't mean he's not just he's also just mm-hmm. he, he's not going to make equal a person who didn't for example drink all his life with someone who did drink all his life. also repentance is there and repentance and forgiveness before you die that's also yeah. something that is there and open. That Allah, is a door that Allah Azza keeps open. But let's just say someone doesn't repent and he does this and he dies upon it. Uh, it's Allah's uh, it's Allah's judgment and justice to say that, okay, you cannot be equal to the person who did it. That person stopped mm-hmm. himself. He obeyed my command and he uh, struggled, but he still obeyed. You didn't mm-hmm. obey and, and you did fulfill, fulfilled your desires and did what you wanted to do. How can Allah make them equal? So mm. merciful has to be in line with just. Allah is not just one attribute in which he's just like the most mer- loving or the most merciful. At the same time, he's the most just. In the same time, he, he punishes people for the evil that they do. It's a balance that we have as Muslims. So essentially, there's kind of tears to paradise depending on your deeds as well. Yeah. It's just general entry. Okay. Yeah, there's levels in paradise, yes. Not everyone is in the same. That's it. This idea of like people who did more, people who did less. It's just like hellfire has grades below or whatever term you want to use down like it's the same mm-hmm. thing not, not not every people were equally evil so the mm-hmm. punishment as well is not equal for the people these people will be punished more than others okay yeah that's that's something interesting to think about too so um but, but yeah i think i just wanted to ask you some some clarification on those verses that i was thinking about and um mm-hmm. and i think you've you've cleared that up well with the abrogation stuff so and you said i can i, I can find more about that in and just tafs years yeah generally if you if you are like you come across a verse and you might find like there are even books written on that but well, the ones i know are in arabic to be fair mm. so that's why i say always ask a person of knowledge or doing some research on it perhaps uh, read it tafsir is a start is a good starting point for sure because most likely it would mention it if mm. you read multiple of different tafsir and etc uh it will give you kind of an explanation combining the verses that is generally a good place to start but if you don't, then you can always ask a person uh, who is knowledgeable or a person of knowledge, and they're always going to direct you. But the, my question to you now, if uh, if I can ask you a question, yeah, that's fine. Is yeah, what is stopping you from being a Muslim then? If it seems like you're doing like hardcore research, you know, comes to Islam, yeah. which is good, you're asking good questions. So what is like that stopping point that is stopping you from being a Muslim? Um, I feel like to answer this, it's just like, hmm. like obviously becoming. Like choosing choosing a faith is like a big deal, kind of right. And it's like to to give some background to me, I've kind of been been around a little bit. Like I was I was raised into like a Catholic family, right? Um, and then like um, I'm, I'm mixed race, so my mom is from is like a Chinese Singaporean, and so she brought Buddhism into the family. And then mm. once once I strayed from Catholicism, I I tried studying Buddhism, and then mm. you know that kind of fell apart too. And then now I'm kind of at the spot where it's like, if I'm going to commit to like, to a faith, if I'm going to say the Shahada, I want to like, be, like truly believe in every word that I'm saying to okay. the point where it's like, I kind of have 
no doubts, right? And so, okay. I mean, in terms of like my research into Islam, I just want to make sure that like all my bases are covered so that, you know, when that day comes, when I do take the Shahada, it's like, uh, I'll just be like on that straight path. And it's like, you know, nothing can really deter me. Because I, I would say like my ground right now is is a bit shaky just from like words and whispers of other people and, mm. and these things and that. But, you know, every time I've I've had like a, a question about Islam, it seems it seems the answer is very clear and, yeah. and you know, all of that. So it seems, it seems good for now, but it's just like, I don't want to rush in too fast. And then all of a yeah. sudden I get, I get shook by something and it's like, oh, well then. I get what you're saying. Know, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, no, no, that's a good, right that's now. a good uh, point, but have a point as well in mm -hmm. which you say, okay, this is where, this is it now. This is where I'm sure. Cause it can mm -hmm. be an endless journey that a lot of people like fall into right, as well. Where they just like going in a loop of asking questions because questions you can ask forever, for sure. Like, yeah. it's not like there's an ending point for questions, right? I ask yeah. questions all the time. People you know, mm -hmm. ask questions all the time. So there is questions and it is, it is never ending stopping point for the questions. So uh, have, a have a point in which, okay, this is it, right? Okay. This is where, uh, this is where I'm ready. That's, that's the only thing that I would say. All right, uh, Jack, do you have any other questions? Um, I think I'm good for now. Thank you so much for your help. And all right, welcome to come back that, yeah. another time as well. Bye-bye. All right, thank you, brother.